kids, Miss Kulkani again. Let's continue with liquids and solutions in this video. Now look at the table. This is something for you to remember which we learned in past that we have mixtures which can be called as solutions, colloids and also suspensions. What is the difference between each one of those? First of all, solutions are homogeneous, that means they all look same, they are uniform, whereas colloids and suspensions are heterogeneous or they are not uniform. About the particle size, as we go from solutions to suspensions, particle size will be increasing. That means it will be highest for suspension and it will be lowest for solutions. About separating, only suspensions can be separated by standing. And then, what about filtration method? That only works for suspension. You cannot separate the components of solutions and colloids by filtration. How about scattering of light? And both these can scatter the light. And which are those? Those are colloids and suspensions. Solutions are the only one which will not scatter the light. And here are some examples for us to remember. Simple salt water, sugar water. That's a solution which is clear, uniform. And then milk is a colloid. And any salad dressing, maybe Italian salad dressing, that will be like a suspension. Alright, moving on. These are some more vocabulary words. A solution is nothing but simply a mixture which is homogeneous. Then there is a physical change. Physical change is something in which we do not change chemical formula or chemical composition. And mixture actually is an example of physical change. Solute and solvent. Something which is being dissolved is called a solute and something which serves as dissolving medium will be called as solvent. So let's say we are supposed dissolving sugar in water, then sugar is the one which gets dissolved, so it's solute and we have water which acts as a medium, so that will be called as solvent. Then there are some words soluble and insoluble which means capable of dissolving and not capable of dissolving. Then there is miscible and immiscible. If you have two liquids which are mixed up and if they are forming uniform liquid, you cannot find out that there are two liquids mixed up then that is called miscible. Whereas this immiscible when you mix two liquids and they can actually separate into layers. That means they will be called as immiscible liquids. Okay, let's move on with some solubility rules. And we are going to complete here the solubility rules for covalent compounds. Just to remind you, for covalent compound, the rule is like dissolves like. And when we say like, we are talking about the polarity. So if we have polar solvents and polar solutes, then we will have both of them soluble. Whereas if you have both solute and solvent non-polar, they will be still soluble. What happens when we have one polar and the other one is non-polar? That will not be soluble. So let's take first example. Here is an example with water and phosphorus tribromide. The formula for water of course is H2O and formula for phosphorus tribromide is PBr3. In order for us to find out polarity, what we need to find out is Lewis dot structure for which we need to figure out the valence electrons for each of the molecule. So in water we have two hydrogen, each one gives you one electron. In oxygen we end up having six valence electron and we have one atom, so we get six. When we add these two, 
it gives you eight electrons total. And now when we write the Lewis dot structure, oxygen comes in the middle and we have hydrogen on each side of oxygen. The first thing is they both will have a shared pair of electrons. So out of eight, we got four electrons used up. How many are remaining? Remaining are four. These four electrons are going to be around oxygen and that gives you ABX formula which will be A as 1 then B is the number of atoms around that which will be 2 and X is the electron pair. We have one electron pair on the top and one over here. We have two electron pairs so it will be AB2X2 and when we have the electron pair that makes the compound a polar compound. So we end up having water as a polar compound. Let's think about PBr3. How many electrons we get totally? It is one phosphorus that means it's five electrons and we have three bromine so it's three times seven which ends up giving you 26 electrons in total. So for Lewis dot structure we have phosphorus in the middle and then we have all three bromine atoms around that. We begin writing first of all two electrons between each phosphorus and bromine and then we are going to complete the octet for each of the surrounding atoms and then we take the count of electrons. So around each bromine we have 8 electrons that means it's 8 times 3 24 that means we are left with 2 electrons which are going to show here at the bottom of phosphorus atom which makes the ABX formula as A B 3 because we have 1 2 3 3 atoms and X is the electron pair which is 1 AB 3 X 1. No matter how many electron pairs we have if you have any electron pairs in ABX formula that makes the substance polar. So what we end up having? We end up having both substances polar and using the rule like dissolves in like that will be soluble. Let's move on to some other examples. Here is ammonia and methane. Ammonia is NH3 and methane is CH4. The number of electrons for ammonia is going to be 5 for nitrogen and for each hydrogen there is 1. So it is 3 times 1 which gives you 8 electrons whereas for methane is going to be 4 for 1 carbon and for each hydrogen it will be 1. So that will be again 8 electrons. When we draw the Lewis dot structure we are going to have nitrogen and 3 hydrogen around that. We get electron pair between each of the atoms. Out of 8, 6 are used up. So we are left with 2 which we are going to show over here that makes the ABX formula as AB3X and that makes the compound as a polar compound. Let's think about CH4. In CH4 carbon is in the middle and then we have each hydrogen around that carbon. Then we are going to have electron pair between each hydrogen and carbon there and then what happens? Out of 8 nothing is left. So we are practically done with Lewis dot structure which gives it a B4. Now look at that. There is no X, no electron pair and also this is a symmetrical molecule. Based upon that the compound is non-polar and now if you have one compound as polar and other as non-polar what does it make? This makes insoluble. 
let's do one more there is water and carbon tetrafluoride now we just did water earlier so i'm not going to repeat that water is a polar substance because we get the formula a b 2 x 2 for that for carbon tetrafluoride it is cf4 as the formula the electron numbers are 4 plus each fluorine has 7 so that ends up giving 32 total electrons and then when we have Lewis dot structure what do we end up getting we end up getting all octates complete and then how many are remaining it's eight around each fluorine that means we used up all 32 so nothing is remaining which makes the abx formula as simply ab4 there is no x no electron pair and also it's symmetrical molecule which makes it non-polar if it is non-polar and this is polar this will be insoluble let's do one more example okay in this example it's ethane versus propane ethane formula is c2 h6 and propane is c3 h8 if you want to find the electron count for ethane that comes out to be 14 and electron count for propane is 20 so when you are drawing the Lewis dot structure for ethane it is carbon with carbon so we end up having two electrons there in between two carbon and then we have hydrogen around each of the carbon atom and what happens each of the carbon atom will have shared electrons so we end up using all the electrons let's think about propane propane is three carbon atom so between each carbon we end up having an electron pair and then we have hydrogen atom around each carbon atom and what happens to electrons each carbon hydrogen will have electron pair so when we count all 20 electrons are used up so basically we don't have any X or electron pairs and if you look at the structure their symmetrical structure that makes both the compounds nonpolar so it is nonpolar plus nonpolar which means they will be soluble something to keep in mind if you have a simple alkane it will be always nonpolar just telling you a trick well all right guys I hope you enjoyed the video I will see you next time. Until that, bye.